Hello everyone, and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth, and today I'll be talking about the book The Secret of the Rosary, which was published in 1710 by St. Louis de Montfort. St. Louis de Montfort was a French priest, and the book revolves around the power of the rosary. St. Louis only talks about the joyful, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries, as the book was written in 1710, and the luminous mysteries were added to the rosary in 2002. And here I'd like to mention that there is nothing bad or wrong about praying the luminous mysteries, because there can't be nothing wrong with meditating on events in the Bible while reciting Hail Marys. And this is actually not my opinion, but I asked a priest who, as far as I know, only prays the traditional mysteries, and he said that there's nothing bad about praying the luminous mysteries as well. In this video, I will summarize what St. Louis writes about how to pray the rosary and what common mistakes there are when praying it, why it is so powerful, and I will explain the symbolic meaning behind certain parts of the rosary. And I would like to start with a passage where St. Louis explains that it is actually hard to pray the rosary because of its repetitiveness. And to be honest, I really appreciated that St. Louis mentions that because I've never really heard anyone admit that it is hard to persevere in praying the rosary. Now, St. Louis writes, When the rosary is well said, it gives Jesus and Mary more glory and it is more meritorious for the soul than any other prayer. But it is also the hardest prayer to say well and to persevere in, owing especially to the distractions which almost inevitably attend to the constant repetition of the same words. So if it's hard for you to focus when praying the rosary, St. Louis obviously knew the struggle. And then he also writes, Always remember that the best rosary is the one with the most merit, and there is more merit in praying when it is hard than when it is easy. When it comes to a method on how to pray the rosary, St. Louis writes that we should pray it on our knees if possible, but he says that it's okay to even pray the rosary when walking, for example, when you're walking to, when you're going to work, or to uh, pray it while doing some manual work. And then he also talks about praying in a group, and here he writes that if you pray the rosary alone, you have the merit of one rosary. But if you pray it as a group, you have the merit of every single rosary of each individual in that group. So if you pray, let's say, in a group of 30 people, you have the merit of 30 rosaries. And another benefit of praying in a group is that the fervor of one person makes up for the lack of fervor of another. So if you're having a bad day, you can't focus, um, the fervor of another person makes up for that. Another piece of advice from St. Louis is to make pauses when praying the rosary. So for example, when you pray the Our Father, make pauses to meditate on what you just said. So for example, you pray Our Father, and then you think about what that means. Um, what it means that God is your Father, and then you continue. You pray who art in heaven, and you meditate on what the meaning of that is, and you do this with every part of the Our Father. St. Louis writes that if a Hail Mary or an Our Father is said that reverently, it is worth more than if you said the same prayer a thousand times distractedly. Now I'd like to mention what St. Louis writes about common mistakes when praying the Rosary, and he says that there are two pitfalls most people fall into during the Rosary. The first one is that they don't know what they are praying for, they just start the rosary without asking for any graces. And the second mistake that many people make is that the only intention they have when praying the rosary is to finish it as quickly as possible. He also stresses the importance of actually meditating on the mysteries when praying the rosary, because the rosary not only consists of the vocal prayers, so the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers, but also it also contains meditations on the mysteries. The author quotes what Mary told blessed Alan de la Roche when she appeared to him in a vision. When people say 150 angelic salutations, this prayer is very helpful to them, and it is a very pleasing tribute to me. But they will do better still and will please me even more if they say these salutations while meditating on the life, death, and passion of Jesus Christ, for this meditation is the soul of this prayer. By meditating on the rosary, we analyze the life of the Holy Family and try to imitate their virtues. Just as a portrait painter who wants to do a good job places himself before his model and glances at him before making each stroke, so the Christian must always have the life and virtues of Jesus Christ before his eyes, so that he may never say, think, or do the least thing which is not in harmony with his model. 
Saint Louis quotes Saint Gregory of Nyssa, who said that we are all artists and that our souls are blank canvases which we have to fill in. The colors which we must use are the Christian virtues and our model is Jesus Christ, the perfect living image of God the Father. Here I'd like to share an idea I recently came up with, uh, namely to sing your rosary in moments or places where you would like to sing anyways. This has the benefit that when you sing the rosary it takes you longer and so while you're holding a note you can meditate on what you're just singing. Plus as you initially wanted to sing anyway it's easier to actually stick to praying the rosary and not to drift away with other thoughts. And if we take a place like for example the shower, for some reason people get really creative in the shower. And so I think that this helps with meditating on the rosary as it might be easier to come up with ideas on what to meditate on. Of course it will be good and important to pray the rosary kneeling in front of a cross, but sometimes that is not possible, so you have to find other opportunities to pray the rosary. And for everyone who doubts that praying in the shower is reverent enough, I would like to tell the story of Saint Teresa, who had the habit to pray everywhere, even on the toilet. And the story goes like this. One day, the devil was mocking Saint Teresa of Avila for praying while she was on the commode toilet, and she answered him saying something like, what comes out of there is for you. What comes from my lips is for God. So if it's okay to pray on the toilet, it must also be okay to pray in the shower. I would also like to summarize the symbolic meaning of the traditional three parts of the rosary. So why the rosary was initially divided into the joyful, the sorrowful and the glorious mysteries. And again, there's nothing bad in praying the luminous mysteries as well, but there simply was a meaning behind the initial three parts, which I just found interesting. I'd like to summarize that as well. First, to honor the three persons of the most blessed Trinity. Second, to honor the life, death and glory of Jesus Christ. Third, to imitate the church triumphant, to help the members of the church militant, and to lessen the pains of the church suffering. Fourth, to imitate the three groups into which the Psalms are divided, the first being the purgative life, the second for the illuminative life, and the third for the unitive life. Fifth, and finally, to give us graces in abundance during our lifetime, peace at death, and glory in eternity. Another interesting part from the book is when St. Louis analyzes the Our Father and, for example, he explains the meaning of the phrase, give us this day our daily bread. First, the author explains that by asking for our daily bread, we just ask for what is necessary, which does not include luxury. Then we ask for this bread today, this day, which means that we are only concerned for the present and we leave tomorrow in the hands of providence. And then by asking for our daily bread, we recognize that we need God's help every day and that we are entirely dependent upon him. When it comes to demonstrating the power of the rosary, St. Louis likes to tell stories where the rosary proved to be very powerful. The first story is that of a nun who appeared after death to one of her sisters in religion and told her that if she were allowed to go back into her body to have the chance to just say one single Hail Mary more, even if it was said quickly and without great fervor, she would have gladly gone through the suffering that she had during her last illness all over again in order to gain the merit of this one prayer. The second story is that of a woman who went to confession to Saint Dominic, who gave her a whole rosary as a penance and advised her to say it every day. But the woman said that she had no time to say the rosary as she was practicing many other devotions and penances and that she was fasting so much, etc. Later, that woman fell into ecstasy during prayer and she had a vision of her soul appearing before the judgment seat of her Lord and she saw how all her penances and prayers were put onto one balance of the scales and all her sins and imperfections on the other. And she saw how her good works were greatly outweighed by the weight of her sins and imperfections. So the woman cried for mercy and the Blessed Virgin took the one and only rosary which the woman had said for her penance and added it onto the tray of all her good works. And this one rosary was so heavy that it weighed more than all her sins and after that vision the woman of course became a big fan of the rosary. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. For me personally the book was an 8 out of 10 because I prefer books that are more directly oriented towards helping you with a specific problem and this book 
was mainly focused on showing you why the rosary is important and it didn't really help with meditating on it, at least not for me. And the fact that the rosary is important to pray is something that I knew before reading this book. So in that regard, the book wasn't really helpful for me. But if you need some inspiration on why to pray the rosary, I definitely recommend this book. And also, if you like to read about stories and anecdotes, I'd also recommend this book, which is something that I personally don't like to read that much. But I know that there are people who like this. So in that case, I would recommend this book to you. That's been it for today. See you next week. God bless and bye!